All right, in this lesson, we're going to talk about trig proofs. Okay, trig proofs work similar to the way that proofs did in geometry, where uh, we start off with a given piece of information, and we want to prove something. Um, in, in trig, what we're normally given is some sort of identity, so an equation that, that two expressions are equal, and we want to um, show that they are, in fact, equal by a series of um, logical steps that you can deduce from step to step until you get to uh, what you're asked to prove. Okay, so we're going to start off with, a, with the algebraic proof to kind of see the form of what our trig proofs are going to look like. So example one, we're asked to prove the algebraic identity <clears throat> x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 minus x squared minus 1 over x plus 1 equals 2. Okay, so for our trig proofs, our first step, we want to start with one side of the equation, and typically we'll start with the more complicated side, so the side that has more stuff, because um, it's, it's generally easier to go from more complicated to simpler than it is to go from simpler to more complicated. Uh, so let's start with this left side. It definitely looks more complicated. So I'm going to um, take this side here, and, and I want to keep my goal in mind. I want to through a series of, of steps, I want to rewrite this form of this expression so that, um, so that it becomes 2. So let's start here. So the first thing I see is I've got a couple of differences of squares in the, in the numerator. So I want to go ahead and expand those to x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay, so both of my x squared minus 1's I just expanded to their um, factor form. So now we can see that we've got uh, common factors on the top and the bottom of, in our first term, x minus 1. So anything over itself is 1. In our second term, we've also got, um, nope, that should be a plus, shouldn't it? Alright, so let's keep that one, and let's cross through that one. Okay, so we've got x plus 1, x plus 1 crossed out, and what are we left with? We've got x plus 1 from here, take away x minus 1, no more fractions. Okay, and again, we want this to look like this. So, um, <clears throat> we're subtracting, and then we've got to be careful here, Mr. Fuller, that we're subtracting all of x minus 1. So if we want to distribute that subtraction, then we've got x plus 1, we bring it down, we're going to subtract x, and we're going to subtract a negative 1, which is the same thing as adding a positive. So now, if we combine our like terms, we've got x minus x, and we've got 1 plus 1. Okay, anything minus itself is 0, so we've got 0 plus 2, which is just 2, so we can bring down the right side of our equation, 2 definitely equals 2. So, we knew we were finished when we simplified one side of our equation to make it look like the other side. Alright, so now let's look at some a similar identity but with trigonometry inside. Alright, example 2. Prove that tangent of x plus cotangent of x equals secant of x cosecant of x. Alright, so step 1. We want to pick which side we're going to manipulate. Um, I'm going to go with this side. We've got a sum, and this side just, I don't know, neither of them look simple, but I'm going to start with this side. All right, so um, from our quotient identities, um, and those identities, this is so important where they're, they're going to come in handy to where you can just kind of spit them out like you would a, 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 a multiplication table problem. So tangent of x. Sine over cosine, cotangent of x is cosine over sine. Okay, and again, we're just looking at one side of our equation. It's a whole lot like what we did when we first learned our identities, where we were just simplifying an expression using our identities. The difference here, and it's kind of a bonus, in that we know what, we're, what our goal is. We know what it's going to look like when we're done. Okay, when we were just simplifying them and... And 5, 1, 
um, or 6A, 9A, um, we didn't exactly know what we were going to get when we were simplified. Okay, Sometimes it would be um, just a trig function, sometimes it would be a constant, we didn't know. But now we know. Alright, so, now, um, this is just one term here, but over here we've got two terms. Um, typically we'll want to combine that into a single term. So when we've got fractions, we need a common denominator. So I want to combine these into one term. So I want to get a common denominator. This guy I'm going to have to multiply by sine of x on the bottom to get my common denominator. This guy I'm going to have to multiply by cosine of x. Okay, we do it on the top and the bottom so we don't change the value, just the form. Okay, we've got a 1 here, a 1 here. So now we've got sine squared of x over sine of x cosine of x plus cosine squared of x over sine of x cosine of x. See where this one's going? Okay, so now we've got common denominators, combine them. Okay, and again, our goal is to make it look like this. We've got one term now, which is good, so we're slowly making our way towards that. Now, we know from our Pythagorean identity that sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is just 1. So let's rewrite that. So we've got 1 over sine of x, cosine of x. Okay, and we're almost there. So I'm going to um, split this into a product since this is a product of two trig functions. I'm going to split this into 1 over sine of x and 1 over cosine of x. Okay, and then from our reciprocal identities, we know 1 over sine of x is our cosecant x and 1 over cosecant, cosine of x is secant of x and we can switch the order of multiplication anytime we want to so this is secant of x cosecant of x which is exactly what we were asked to prove so example 2 check Okay, example number three, we're asked to prove cosine of t over 1 minus sine of t equals 1 plus sine of t over cosine of t. Okay, so now which one's more complicated? Well, they both look similarly complicated, um, so I'm just going to pick the one on the left. Okay, so I'm going to bring this down. We've got cosine of t over 1 minus sine of t. Okay, now this one's tricky. Now, just looking at this for the first time, I would not see what direction to go in to get from here to here. But, having practiced these, and, and the best way to get to master trig proofs is to practice, 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 over and over again, um, proving these trig identities. Um, I, I see kind of a, a similarity here in the 1 minus sine of t and 1 plus sine of t, and then I've got cosine in both of these. Now, I know that um, if I were to uh, make this a difference of squares on the bottom, then um, I know 1 minus sine squared of t is cosine squared of t. So, that's my best bet right now. So, so one, one tool that you have is to use difference of squares to your advantage. Even if you've just got one piece of a, of a one factor of a difference of squares, then multiply by the conjugate of that piece. Okay, and, and make that difference of squares happen. So this is going to be 1 minus, let me get down. But 
1 minus sine square root of t on the bottom, and then on the top it's going to be, if I distribute, we're going to have cosine of t plus cosine of t sine of t. And that is cosine t, not cost. Okay? So, now I can replace this from my Pythagorean identity with um, cosine squared of t. So I've got cosine, and I might, I might should have left this cosine of t factored out. Okay, and seeing that this is our goal, it, it, it would make sense to leave it factored out like that. Okay, so now we've got cosine squared of t. So now notice we've got one factor of cosine in the top, two factors of cosine in the bottom. So this one we can get rid of. And this is really cosine of t times cosine of t. So we can slash through one of those factors. And what we have left is 1 plus sine of t over cosine of t, which is exactly what we were asked to prove. Okay, again, step-by-step, uh, -step, logically um, equivalent expressions until we get to the other side of our equation. Okay, example number four. Last example we're going to do together. It says prove sine to the fifth of x times cosine squared of x equals, in parentheses, cosine squared of x minus 2 cosine to the fourth of x plus cosine to the sixth of x, close parentheses, times sine of x. Wow, this is a good one. Okay, so now this side definitely looks more complicated. So I'm going to start here and try to manipulate this one until it looks like this side here. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this, um, and I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to put the sign in the, in the front, and I'm going to go ahead, and I see that cosine squared is a factor of each of all three of these terms here, so I'm going to go ahead and factor out a cosine squared. Okay, and again, keeping this in mind, this is what I want it to look like when I get down to the end. This is already just by moving this to the front, and by factoring out that cosine square, this is already looking, looking good. Okay, and then factoring out cosine square, that's going to be 1 minus, and I'll, yeah, I'll leave it that. 1 minus 2 cosine squared of x plus cosine to the fourth of x. Okay, so now we've got to deal with this beast. So this looks like real similar to a quadratic expression, quadratic trinomial. Um, I'll bet we can factor this. So if we bring down these two, I'll bet we can factor this as the product of two binomials, where one is our first term, um, cosine squared, going to be our second term, and since this term is positive, we're going to have the same sign. This term's negative, we're going to have negative signs. Does that work? That's that. Inside, outside. Okay, that looks good to me. Okay, so we've got sine of x times cosine squared of x times 1 minus cosine squared of x times 1 minus cosine squared of x. Now, do these look familiar? I hope so. Uh, anytime you see this, light bulb should go off, and you should think Pythagorean identity. This is the same as sine squared of x. So let's replace both of these with sine squared of x. So bring these down, sine of x, cosine squared of x. This becomes sine squared of x. This becomes sine squared of x. Okay, we've got a product of all these, so let's group all of our signs together. 
we've got one, two, three, four, five factors of sine. So we've got sine to the fifth of x. We've got two factors of cosine of x. Okay, that's exactly what we were asked to prove that this is equal to. So that is where we should say that is equal to same thing. Okay, again, you're not done until you have um, manipulated one side of the equation to make it look like the other. Okay, so here are three more identities I'd like for you to prove. Um, so jot these down in your notes. Make sure, make sure you give yourself some space to work these out. Uh, we'll talk about these in class, uh, in next class. And make sure that you copy down that list of uh, general strategies for solving proofs on the website.